A new study in the Lancet Medical Journal says globally, more than half of adults with diabetes are not getting treatment. It says there are more than 800 million people living with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And that's a number that has doubled in three decades. For more on this, we're now joined by Dr. Christopher Labos. He is an epidemiologist and cardiologist. Dr. Labos, nice to see you this Saturday morning. Nice to see you too. Okay, let's get right to these numbers. What is the main factor driving these numbers up? Uh, I think a lot of it is the rising rates of obesity, especially in lower and middle income countries. While those numbers are up globally, I, the bulk of the increase is happening in low and middle income countries. And some of it might be better access to medical care, more diagnosis, right? When you actually have access to a doctor, you're more likely to get diagnosed with diabetes. But I think a lot of us are concerned that the rising rates of obesity in these parts of the world is likely what's contributing to the increase in diabetes. When we zoom into Canada specifically, though, this article says that the diabetes rates have actually stabilized here in Canada. What has contributed to that stabilization? Uh, I think we're more aware of the problem. I think people are more aware that they need to get screened for things like high blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol. We actually have a pretty good healthcare system in this country, notwithstanding the current problems that we're having with regard to access to a family doctor. We are overall pretty blessed in this country. We have access to the best diagnostic resources. We can test for diabetes. We can treat diabetes. And so overall, we're doing pretty well. And so while things have been pretty stable in Canada, globally, that's why you're seeing the increase in numbers that we saw in this Lancet paper. Let's talk about the diagnosis in men versus women, because the study says that women in Canada have seen the most progress in diabetes rates. What's the reason behind that gender difference? Yeah, we have to speculate there because we don't know from the data. I suspect a lot of it is if you go back 30 years, um, women were often undertreated and underscreened for cardiac disease and most of the cardiac risk factors like high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. So I think what you've seen over 30 years is a greater awareness that women are just as high risk for heart disease as men are, that they need to be screened in the same way. And I think you've seen a bit of a catch up there. And, and nowadays, while discrepancies still exist, I think a lot of that discrepancy has narrowed and that's why you're seeing the low rates or the stabilized rates, rather, of diabetes in both men and, and women. But this number, according to this article, that more than half of adults with diabetes are not getting the treatment, why is that and what are the complications associated with not getting the proper treatment in the first place? And so I think the problem is just the cost of medication. You know, some medications like metformin are, are pretty cheap, but a lot of the newer ones and the most effective ones are very expensive. I mean, look what's happening in the U.S. with the price of insulin. Uh, you know, it's easy for us here in Canada to say, well, diabetes is easy to treat, and it is, and we actually do very well relative to the rest of the planet in terms of treating diabetes. But globally, there is a big problem out there where a lot of people in these low- and middle-income countries don't have access to treatments, and the problem is when you don't treat diabetes, that's when you get increased rates of heart disease, increased rates of stroke, and things that we don't really see very much in Canada anymore, which is blindness, toe amputations, right? The leading cause of blindness in the world is actually diabetes, untreated diabetes. We don't see it in Canada anymore, but it's still a big problem globally. Let's talk about lifestyle, because uh, that is a big part of the equation here. Diet, exercise, also managing and preventing your, uh, your actual uh, illnesses and your, and your symptoms. Um, so let's talk about the weight of that. Uh, what's the message there? So uh, it's, it's obviously very, very important to have proper lifestyle modification, right? You have to have a healthy diet. You have to exercise regularly. All of that is universally true. But when you have a patient in front of you that is sick, that has high blood sugar, you need to get that blood sugar down. Otherwise, you are setting them up for complications down the road. And it's not a dichotomy between lifestyle or medication. You can often use the two together. And in fact, you should use the two together. And there's nothing that stops you from coming off medication down the road if things improve. So lifestyle, exercise, obviously key to diabetes treatment, but one of the things we really need to focus on is that we need to make low-cost medications available to people around the planet. Otherwise, we are just setting them up for heart attacks and strokes and vision loss and kidney failure and even amputations if their diabetes is not treated. This is stuff that we used to see a generation ago in this country, and we don't see it anymore simply because we have better access to medications that prevent these complications. Mm -hmm. Accessibility, always a key issue uh, when talking about any type of uh, medical care. But uh, really quickly, Dr. Labos, let's talk about the promising areas here. We have about 30 seconds left. Um, are we on the right path when it comes to research and treatment? 
I think so. I mean, for type 2 diabetes, very rare that somebody takes insulin anymore. Insulin had problems with it, obviously. It was an injection. It leads to weight gain. In fact, a lot of the new medications are weight neutral, even lead to weight loss, right? That was Ozempic. It was a diabetes medication that also leads to weight loss. It has cardiovascular benefits. It prevents kidney failure. A lot of the medications are vastly superior to the stuff we had 30 years ago. So frankly, we're doing quite well. We just have to get these treatments to the people who actually need them, which is unfortunately not always the case globally. Mm -hmm. Dr. Labos, thank you so much. Nice to see you as always.